Hello folks, welcome to another Dark Table Landscape video. In this one we're going to be looking at colour grading and how we can do that to enhance our photos in a naturalistic way. Let's get started. So what is colour grading? Colour grading is altering the colours and tones in the image to give a feel or a mood. And sometimes it can be quite extreme, like altering the colours of leaves to make them look more autumnal or altering a daylight, a daylight scene to a nighttime scene with using very cool tones. But those are quite extreme and we don't use those very often. Uh, but most uh, landscape images, and indeed any image really, can benefit from some more subtle colour grading, making use of colour theory. And that's what I'm going to go over in this video. So one of the most basic principles of colour theory is complementary colours. On the screen now we've got a uh, colour wheel. And this is part of an app that I've built for this video that I'm going to put a link uh, in the description below too. Uh, you'll be able to use this and I'll go into more detail with this in just a moment. But for now we're just looking at this colour wheel. Uh, so it's essentially a kind of a circular spectrum, a circular rainbow. And the idea of complementary colours is that colours on opposite sides of the wheel are complementary. So blue and yellow for example complementary, uh, purple and green complementary. Uh, but colours next to each other or near to each other on the wheel are uh, clashing. They're not harmonious. They're not complementary. So if you have an image um, with these tones next to each other, uh, you may want to adjust these to create a more sense of kind of more harmony in your image. And that's what we're going to look at in our first example. So here's the image we're going to uh, use in our first example. And on the face of it, not a bad kind of uh, golden hour landscape shot. I haven't done anything to this other than basic exposure adjustment a uh, little bit of uh, colour balance RGB for contrast and vibrance. And of course, uh, the only colour difference is the white balance has been set. Other than that, I haven't touched the colours. So to use the, uh, the Hue Wheel tool that I've put online, uh, the first thing we need to do is just export this image. So I'm just going to go into the light table view with the L key. And I've just set up a very straightforward uh, export. So a thousand pixels doesn't have to be super good quality. Um, just we're just grabbing the colour information here and yes I'm using sRGB so it's not incredibly colour accurate but for the purposes of this it's fine and you can uh, you can use a more accurate colour space if you want to uh, when you're doing this yourself so I'm just going to go ahead and export this and then I'm going to pop back into my uh, web app my Q wheel picker and I'm going to click the load image button up here you can also drag and drop if you want to there's the image I've just exported so we're going to load it in so this tool is really simple. All you're basically doing is clicking points in the image and those points, uh, the colour of those points will be plotted on the colour wheel. So if I just click around here on the hills, you can see the cooler tones in the shadow and the sky. And here on the lake, this is Old Water in the Lake District. So far, so good. Uh, these colours are fairly complementary. So we've got these blue tones, these warmer orangey red tones uh, from the bracken and uh, and foliage on the hillsides here, the fell sides. Uh, but what happens if I click down here in these green trees that are catching the sunlight? You can see that they're very slightly offset. Okay, so these are a more yellow uh, yellow than an orangey yellow. They're a more green yellow, I suppose you'd say. Uh, and this is a problem. Okay, so this is, this is kind of going out of the complementary range that we want. So how can we fix this? So there's, there's various ways we can uh, adjust colour in Darktable, but probably the, the best one is a relatively recent module called Colour Equaliser. So let's grab an instance of that and turn it on. And so we can see that we've got our kind of our standard very Darktable graph here. You may or may not have these sliders underneath. If you don't, you can middle click on the graph to bring up the sliders if you prefer using those. Uh, but I think for this purpose, the, the graph will be better. Um, so the first thing we need to do is make sure that we're only selecting the right greens. So we've got a, a band of greens here in these trees, some green trees here. These are quite green in this area as well, so we probably want to adjust those. But the sunlight falling here makes them a, a little more golden, so we maybe want to kind of use a gradient or something like that to fade that effect out a little bit. Uh, so it doesn't affect them as strongly as it affects these trees at the bottom. So I'm just going to control click the, the colour picker tool and that gives me an area rather than just a point to select from. 
uh, and we can see that yeah and the kind of the properly greenest part of the trees we'll, we're working with this kind of band here so we'll use the node placement slider just to line up a node in the right place and we're on our hue tab so we're adjusting color not saturation or brightness which is what we want i'm just going to drag that down and you can see how all those greens throughout the whole image are becoming more orange so from kind of a, a yellow a greeny yellow to an orangey yellow okay so we're mainly just concentrating our view on here at the moment because we're going to be limiting it there so that still looks fairly natural you know that looks like golden hour sunlight on the trees uh, but it's less green than it was so now we just need to limit this this is a little kind of too strong throughout the rest of the image um, let's use something simple we'll just use a gradient mask so grab a gradient pop it there and flip it around so that we're affecting everything below it and drag it quite far up as so i say we kind of we do want them to adjust these greens a little bit because it is still a non-complementary green uh, but the way the light's hitting it doesn't seem as green as these trees were so let's see how we go with that check out our mask preview it's not bad it's a little bit green here so maybe bring it up let's see how that goes maybe use the details threshold just to kind of make it a little less blanket just increase the details threshold a little bit there we go so this is selecting areas of, of higher detail there we go that's a little less sledgehammer subtlety is the name of the game when it comes to well any adjustment really lots of small subtle adjustments are much better than one big sledgehammer adjustment to the whole image yeah i still think that looks fairly natural we've still got a little bit of the greenness of the leaves uh, but they're more in line we can verify that by exporting the image again and testing it in the picker tool so let's do that okay so i'm back in our hubiel picker and i'm going to load the new image so just export it the same name dark table added zero one to the end now if we click in our trees down here and over here and then also bring in our cool tones we can see that we've got a much narrower band than our previous image in terms of the colors we're dealing with so we've just kind of brought those slightly off kilter greens more in line and more complementary Okay, so we've seen how to uh, make our colour scheme in our photos more harmonious. How about something simpler, something like a really distracting colour? So in this photo here, we've got uh, a standard kind of mountain scene from the northwest of Scotland uh, with a fisherman's shed on the coast. And generally speaking, the colours are all fairly uniform. The, uh, the, the hut and the, the hills and the grass are relatively brown. You've got the sea, which is blue, and the sky, which is blue. Uh, and these two or uh, three boys down here are kind of reasonably similar in tone to, say, the mountains here. But the one glaring uh, standout colour is this uh, obviously newer boy here in the foreground. And anything very bright or anything very saturated or anything unusual that's kind of not repeated elsewhere in the image in terms of colour will stand out and draw our attention. And we don't really want that boy to do that. It's not that interesting. So we can use... A very simple color grading just to remove this um, from uh, the, the the foreground of the viewer's attention if you like we don't want to necessarily clone it out we could but it would be messy and you know you can never get a really perfect clone without a lot of work but we could just reduce the the impact this has on the image with some very simple masking so the first thing i'm going to do is grab my color equalizer module here and I'm going to use, uh, uh, say, a drawn, maybe a drawn parametric. I think we'll probably make use of parametrics as well. I'm going to zoom in. And the first thing I'm going to do is draw a path shape. So click the path shape tool there. Drag a shape around. We're going to be fairly precise because we don't want to, to faff around too much with parametrics. And we can control, hold control and click on an existing path just to add another point come in handy just to refine that a little bit do with one here there we go and let's just ch check out our mask that's pretty good 
Just maybe roll that out and give it a little bit more feather. And a little bit of blur just to make sure this, the effect is subtle. And we'll turn off our mask preview again. And we'll grab our color picker. We'll just use the point version this time. So we can see it's pretty much where we expect it to be in the yellows. And then rather than the hue tab this time, we want to adjust the saturation. We don't want to change the color of this. We basically just want to desaturate it. There we go now. With a very simple desaturation, uh, that's come more in line with the colors of the other boys down here. So it's not necessarily natural. It just looks like it's it's the same age and the same kind of uh, distressingness, if you like, if that's a word. I don't think it is, but it is now. Uh, the same just level of distressed uh, fading that the other ones have. So now it's a lot less distracting. So if I pop that off, back on, let's grab off there so we're not using the uh, seeing the shape of the mask as well. There it stands out. There it just blends in with the rest of the scene. We can carry on processing this as we like. It's a very simple way just to reduce the visual impact of things we don't want to have that much of an impact. So another thing we can do with colour grading in our landscape images is subtly increase the sense of depth. Uh, and that's because the air is full of water. Water is very slightly blue. And so the more air we're looking through, uh, the more water we're looking through. And that has the effect that Distant things, mountains, the horizon, whatever you like, uh, tend to be bluer than things in the foreground. The foreground tends to be warmer, the background tends to be bluer. So, of course, we can use that effect to our advantage with a bit of colour grading and uh, make our images appear to have more depth. So here we have a, another golden hour shot from the northwest of Scotland. This is Slioch up on Loch Marie. And we have a nice kind of pine here and a birch here in the foreground. The golden hour light's making this relatively warm and the background is also catching the same light and that's also subtly warm as well. So what we can do with our colour grading is uh, make that background a little bit bluer and we'll increase that separation and depth in the scene. As always with Darktable there are several ways to skin the colour grading cat but I think I'll just use another instance of colour calibration in this case. We've already got the one here doing uh, white balance duty so I'll right click that make a duplicate and we'll go into the B tab where we already are here. And our input blue at the moment is set to 1. I'm just going to increase that a little bit. So I'm going to right click, type 1.15. And we've increased the blue in the whole image. So now we just need to uh, mask this to the background. So let's do this with another drawn parametric mask. We'll grab a gradient, I think. And we'll set it about there. Let's bring our mask preview on. And obviously we want to exclude the trees and the foreground from this. So let's have a look at uh, our masking options. So we hover over the gradient here in the mask, the parametric mask tool, and press the C key. You can see the, uh, the mask itself. So there's not a great deal of separation. That's not too bad between the tree here and the background. That's the main thing I'm looking at. Uh, this is a little bit darker. Now reds. Yeah, not, nothing major. Greens. Now blue is not bad. I don't think we've got much difference in these blues here. So maybe blues. Uh, the Jay-Z channel. It's not bad either. Chromaticity, so saturation essentially. And then colour itself. Let's have a look at colour. Not bad separation there either. Uh, let's try blue for now. Uh, so if I click my picker here and click on the tree. And let's just move them between the two. So here's our background value. You can see that that's about here on the graph. And if I click on the tree, you can see that's further down. So we should be able to get some separation with that. Let me zoom back out. So uh, let's pull our sliders up to about there. Let's pop on our preview again so we can see what's going on. So there is uh, fully unmasked and then so I'll just drag it away for a little bit of subtlety. I'm essentially just going to pull this up until I start to see the mountain reappearing in the background here. So we don't want that. We just want to go to about there. Subtle there, but it's on the edge of the image. It's not making too much difference. Uh, let's add some feathering. There we go. A little bit of blurring, maybe some mask contrast as well. And... 
maybe we'll use a little bit of details threshold as well. We will deselect the more detailed stuff just to pull this tree back in a little bit. We're going to lose a little bit here, but it's not too bad. Uh, let's see how that looks in reality. So mask off, mask on. So you can mainly see it in the bottom. I think that's pretty good. Uh, we may just maybe adjust the opacity a little bit of the whole mask just to uh, make the, the bluing less prominent. It's maybe a little bit artificial looking. We want to avoid anything blindingly obvious. If you can tell what's been done to the image, then it's probably been overdone. So, yeah, I think that's pretty good. Let's get rid of the mask there. So there's our uh, unmasked, unprocessed background, relatively warm. And then we just added a subtle bluing to it just to increase the depth a tiny bit. Okay, so there's three uses for color grading and some methods to apply it. Now do uh, check out the color picker wheel uh, in the link in the description below and have a play around with harmonizing the colors in your images. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Do like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks very much for watching as always, and I will catch you on the next one.